Hi there. Now for the last part of this question, we've got to find the time between the instant when the ball is released and the instant when it strikes the ground for the second time. So if you'd like to have a go at this one, haven't had a chance to do it, I'll just give you a moment to pause the video and as usual, when you come back, I'll take you slowly through the work solution. Okay, welcome back then if you had a go. So what I'm going to do is just recap. We've got our ball here, release from rest then. It accelerates under gravity from a height of two meters. We found out in the part A that the speed it hit the ground was root 4G. Then in part B, after that first bounce, it left with a speed of root 3G. Traveled up one and a half meters, came to instantaneous rest, and now it's going to come back down again. We'll just do that with a dotted line and hit the ground again for the second bounce. And we've got to find this total time it takes then. So what I'm going to do is split this up into two sections. I'm going to look at the time it takes to fall to the first bounce. And then I'm going to look at this second diagram here, where I'm just going to work out the time it takes to go from the ground with a speed of root 3G up to instantaneous rest. And because this is symmetrical here, it rises and falls the same height, then I, all I need to do is just double the time. So that's basically how I'm going to go about this. So what we'll do is we'll look at part one here. OK, so we'll have a look at that diagram there. I'm going to take downwards as positive. Remember, we're going to be using the equations for constant acceleration. That's the SUVAT ones, S, U, V, A and T. Taking downwards as positive because that's basically the direction that we're considering motion in. OK, so S we know is 2, U is started at rest, so therefore it's 0, V we now know is root 4G. The acceleration acts downwards in the positive sense, so that's going to be G, and we're asked to find that time. Now there's many equations that you can use that have got T in. The one I'm going to use though is V equals U plus AT. It could be argued this is not a good one to use because it's dependent on knowing V, having worked it out correctly from part A of this question. But I'm going to use it because I feel it's easier to use. So using it then what we've got is V, which is root 4G, so root 4G equals u, which we know is 0. So it's a, which is g, times the time t. And so rearranging this for t, we get therefore t equals the root of 4g divided by g. And if I work this out in the calculator, I find that I get 0 0.6388 and so on. And that will be measured in seconds. I'm not going to round this up because we're going to need it later on to get that total time. So next, I'm just going to consider the motion on this second section. So again, I'm going to use a SUVAT-based equation. Let's just label it S, U, V, A and T again. And I'm going to take upwards as the positive sense. So we'll take upwards there. And this is for the section two. So what we've got is S is going to be plus 1.5 because it's in the positive sense. U is positive root 3G. That's in the upward sense. V, it came to instantaneous rest, so that's zero. A, be careful here, is now minus G, okay? It's in the acting downwards in the opposite sense to what we got here. And we want to find out what the time T is. So this is going to be half of this 
flight, right? Okay, that we're doing. So from here, I'm going to use v equals u plus at again. So we've got v equals u plus at, and I can see that v is zero, and it's equal to u, which is root of 3g, and then it's plus at, so it's plus negative g times t, so that's minus gt. And if I rearrange this to make t the subject, t will equal root 3g divided by g. And working this out in your calculator, I find that you get 0 0.5532 and so on. So this is the time of this half flight. So when it comes to working out the total time, let's just put, uh, we'll border this off I think. We'll just put therefore the total time. That total time is going to be equal to this first time here. 0.6388 and so on, but plus twice this time, two lots of 0.5532 and so on. Working this out, it comes to 1.745 and so on, and then rounding this to say three significant figures, that's going to be 1.75 seconds to three significant figures, 3SF for short. Now, just a point to make here, you could do this another way. You could work out the time t in one go just by setting s to zero, okay? If s is zero, that's the displacement would be zero as it goes up here and back down again. So you could have s is zero, u would be root 3g, the starting velocity, because it'd be in the positive sense. Take out V, okay? A would be minus G, and you could work out T that way, just by using S equals UT plus a half AT squared. So maybe you might want to give that a try, and you should get twice this value for the time. Okay, so anyway, that's the method I would use for this particular question, and uh, hope that's been of some use to you.